In this presentation, we will take a look at the purchases journal for a service company. The purchases journal will be made when we make purchases, but that name can be a little bit deceiving because it means purchases not for cash, but on account, or in other words, it's really an accounts payable journal. Anything we have that's going to be dealing with accounts payable, typically purchases, usually thinking of if we have inventory, then it would be inventory. But for a service company, it might be something like supplies that would be our typical purchase that we would make on account. Note the purchase journal, like many of these special journals, will be something that will be used in more of a manual system, a system done by hand. However, it's also useful to use or know about when using an automated system and a computer system because, one, it's often the case that we want to print out reports similar to what would be look like a purchase journal. And two, it's good to know different types of systems to know what the similarities and differences are in order to better understand any system and the critical components to them as well as what can be adjusted within them. What we're going to do with the purchases journal is record these transactions during the month into the journal rather than making a separate journal entry for each transaction that making the process quicker then we will sum these up at the end of the of the month in our case the month it could be for a different time period it could be for a day it could be for a week it could be for a month we'll be working with a month summing this up at the end of the month then recording that to the uh, a journal entry a normal general journal so let's see that process here. We're going to have the purchases journal. We're going to enter our data into the purchases journal throughout the time period, in our case, the month. At the end of that time period, then we are going to create a journal entry that will be used to post to the general journal. Note that we will also, as we do this, need to be creating the accounts payable subsidiary ledger. This is going to be a key component because the purchases journal will be dealing with vendors. So we're going to be dealing with accounts payable, making uh, meaning that means that account means that we owe people money or companies money. We need to list out not just the dollar amount then, or not just the, um, the date that the dollar amounts happened, but who we owe the money to. And that will be done with the accounts payable subsidiary ledger. We will then of course use that to generate the trial balance. So let's go through some transactions here. We're going to have a purchases journal. Uh, our first transaction we're going to say is for the vendor uh, L, H, and G. So we had a vendor L, H, and G uh, on 7.5 that had uh, 1,500 purchased from them. The other side is going to go to other in this case because uh, it's not going to go into our normal accounts in this case being the landscaping account. So we know that every time we have the purchases journal, because we are dealing with purchases, it's always going to go into accounts payable, meaning we're always going to credit accounts payable. We're going to make another list of accounts for those accounts that we are going to be debiting most often to. And hopefully the purchases journal will be most effective when there's only going to be one or two accounts that we, that we use quite often to make purchases such as like landscaping supplies. But if that's not the case, uh, I mean, there's going to be a lot of times where we could be making purchases on account, kind of like a credit card, where we didn't buy the normal th items. And uh, therefore, then we would have to make our other column and decide how many columns we want to use and then how to utilize the other column. Uh, the other column will have to break out at the end of the time period uh, once we record all of our transactions. We're also going to record this to the accounts payable subsidiary ledger as we go. Note we're not recording to the general ledger or making a journal entry, this is going to be the subsidiary ledger and we're going to record who we owe money to as we go. In this case, L, H, and M. We're going to say that we owe them uh, 1,500, bringing the balance up to 1,500. We will continue to track this, um, uh, who we owe money to as we go. Note this is a kind of a special thing we need to do, special journals for the accounts payable account and a similar one would be done for accounts receivable. Next, we're going to say that on 7-6, we have a company made a purchase. We well, made a purchase. In other words, on account accounts payable of 185. The other side this time going to the landscaping supply. So we purchased landscaping supplies, increase the accounts payable by the 185, as will always be the case when using the purchases journal. The other side then go into what would typically be our most normal account for this type of company, landscaping supplies. 
We're then going to record that once again to the accounts payable subs uh, subsidiary ledger. And so here we have a company. We got the 185 bringing the balance up to 185. Note once again, this isn't the general ledger. This is the subsidiary ledger by account for accounts payable only. Next, we're going to have on 7-8, we have B Company. We had another payable that was going to be for 315. The other side, once again, going to other. Other is going to be the other side for this item here. So we don't know exactly what we made the payment for, but it's not landscaping supplies. And therefore, we're going to put it into other category, breaking that out at the end of the time period when uh, rec we record this information into the general journal. We are going to record it now into the subsidiary ledger. So within the subsidiary ledger, we're going to put a credit to the B company. This is not the general ledger. It is the subsidiary ledger. Increasing the balance to that 315. Next, we're going to have purchases journal on 718 L, H, and G. We've got 140 into accounts payable. The other side is this case is going to go to our normal account, landscaping supplies. So there's landscaping supplies. If we then uh, total this up, we're going to say that we have a total of the 1,500 plus the 185 plus the 315 plus the 140 gives us 2,140. The 185 plus the 140 gives us 325. The 1,500 plus the 315 gives us the 1,815. We also want to see that last 140 here on the L, H, and G. So there's the 140 owed to accounts payable. Here it is in L, H, and G, bringing the balance up from 1,500 by 140 to 1,640. Now we're going to use this information in order to make our journal entry. So our journal entry, so we'll use this information in order to make the journal entry. So note what we have here. We've got accounts payable uh, is going to be a credit. We've got the landscaping supplies that uh, will be one of the debits. And then the other side, we're going to have to break this out, the 1,500 and the 315 to the relevant accounts. Probably should be adding a note here so that we can put what those relevant accounts will be uh, as well. So note that it would be useful to have another column here giving us a note, an explanation as to where the other column will go uh, in, in addition to the vendors. Sometimes the vendors will tell us where, what that will be, of course, because we will have the same vendors multiple times. So if we look at the transaction, we're going to say landscaping is the 325 that we're pulling over. We're going to say that the lawn equipment, that's what that 1,500 was. So the 1,500 in the other account is going to lawn equipment. Then we've got advertising expense. Uh, that was in the other category. So on account, we bought on account advertising expense. Now putting that into the expense account. And then finally, the accounts payable for the total going... Uh, up in the credit direction 2150 so then the 325 plus the 1500 plus the 315 then would add up to the 2140 we're then going to record this information and post it to the general ledger so here we have the general ledger down here we're going to say that the landscaping supplies is going to go from zero up by this 325 to 325 then we've got the lawn equipment going from zero up by the 1,500 to 1,500. Then we've got the advertising. Here's advertising. We're going to take the, this posting up here. So we've got it going from zero up by the 315 to the 315. And then finally, accounts payable, posting out accounts payable, it going from zero up by the 2,140 to the 2,140. Note we're only looking at the general ledger accounts for those items that uh, we are dealing with here. We can then use that to generate the trial balance. So if we look at the trial balance, the ending balance is in for the landscaping supplies, 325 here, landscaping supplies, 325 there. We got the advertising expense, 315 here, advertising expense, 315 there. We've got the lawn equipment, 1,500 here. We've got the lawn equipment, 1,500 there. We've got the accounts payable, 2,140 here and 2,140 there. Next, we want to just compare and be able to see that within this account where we're focusing here on, uh, we have 2140. That represents money that we owe to vendors. We want to break that out by who we owe it to. The general ledger doesn't break that out. It only gives us the dates as to when 
they came about. And here we even have to go back to the subsidiary or the, the uh, purchases journal in order to see the actual dates because we just recorded one number at the end of the time period, in this case, the end of the month. We also want to see that by who we owe the money to. So in this case, L, H, and G, A company, B company, 1,640, 185, and 315 is what is owed respectively. If we add those up, then they add up to the 2,140, which of course matches the general ledger and the trial balance.